Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mountain Studio, and today we're going to continue this series of using reusable pop-ups and how to pass data back from the reusable pop-up to the view controller that opened it. On a previous video, I talked about using the notification center. So if we opened up our pop-up and we clicked on save date, took the information from the notification and put it in this label. In this video, we're going to talk about a different way on how to get data from this pop-up to the view controller and it's called using callbacks. And it's a little bit of an advanced topic, so I'm gonna step you through it and kind of describe what's happening as we go along. So what we're gonna do, just to organize this project to make it easier to reference in the future, I'm gonna change this label, and I'm gonna call this Notification Center. Okay, and I'm gonna put the code for the callbacks in this one. So in this second view controller, instead of using the notification center, I'm just going to take out all this code here. Okay, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to delete all this code because I don't think we'll need any of it, but we will need some code from the first view controller. And specifically, we need this override right here because we don't have this in the second view controller. Okay. Now the reason why we had this segue in the first place was so we could set this property right here. And we didn't have it in the second view controller because it's not really needed. I was just showing this as an example as how to set properties on your view controller that you're navigating to. But we'll keep this in here. And the reason why I want this is because in order to use callbacks, I have to be able to set another property on this date pop-up view controller. Okay, so where to begin? The first thing I need to do is I need to create a property on this date pop-up view controller that can hold a function. That's right, it's a property that you can assign a function to. And that's one of the abilities in Swift that it allows you to do is assign a function to a variable. So what that means is functions can be types because when you create a variable, like this right here, let's take this label for example, you set it to the type of UI label. And if you want to create a string variable, then you say var my string, and you set it to a type of string. And that's what this is. This is a type. Well, you can do the same thing with functions. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up that function in this date pop up view controller. So I'm just going to hold down command and right click to navigate to it. And we'll set up the function right here. And for this function, I'm going to call it on save. So this function will get called every time I save the date or the time. So how do I define a function type here? Well, first, what we're going to do is we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about function types and the basic structure of a function. And I'm going to explain this to you by using a playground. OK. So let's, let's take an example of a function. Now this right here is the type of the function. This function is defined by its input parameters and what it returns. Now normally, if there's nothing being returned, you don't really need this, this part right here. So that's why you see a lot of functions that just look like that. Another option of writing this is you could say, if it doesn't return anything, then you could say it returns void. But again, that is optional too. If it doesn't return anything, then you don't really need this. But the basic thing I want you to understand is this is the basic function type, is this right here. That right there. It's its input parameters and what's being returned. So we may have another function It looks like this. And now this function type is actually this part right here. But you don't really care about the parameter names. So really this function type looks like this. You pass in two ints and it returns an int. So those are function types and that's how you can distinguish and set up function types. So and that's what we want to do here. So when we set up this function type, Basically, what we want to do is we want to specify that data is being passed in 
that's going to be a string. That's going to be our formatted string. So it's going to call this function. It's going to pass in a, the string that was selected. It'll either be formatted date or formatted time. And it's not going to return anything. So we'll just leave that blank. So there's our function type right here. It takes in one parameter and it doesn't return anything. And we want this to be optional too. So you notice it's given us a, a problem right now. It says um, the on save uh, doesn't have an initial value. So it's not going to have an initial value. So we want it to be optional. In order to do that, you, for function types, you can't just put like a question mark behind it. Instead, what you have to do is you have to enclose it in parentheses like that. Then that should get rid of that error. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now what we want to do is when they click on save, what we want to do is we want to call. So we want to call on save here. And notice here it shows our function type. So it's going to expect a string to be passed into it. And the string we want to pass is actually the formatted date or the formatted time. Like formatted date like that. Okay. But oh, you know what? It's it's optional. So what I need here is a question mark. And with the question mark there, it basically means if on save is nil, meaning I didn't assign a function to this variable, then it'll just skip over this. It won't create an error. Now remember, we're going to be returning a formatted date or a formatted time. So what I need to do is check that variable first. Show time picker. And if that's true, then we don't want to return the formatted date. We want to return the formatted time. There we go. Okay, that should be it as far as the pop-up is concerned. We basically set up this variable and gave it a function type. And then we call that function passing in the formatted time or the formatted date. Okay, now what do we do with this? Well, let's go back to our second view controller. Okay, so there's two ways that you can do this. One, we can actually assign that property to a function itself. So you say on save equals, and then we can say on save, which is a local function that matches that signature here. So let's create that function here. Remember, if we're going to be creating this function, it has to match that same function type. So if we go back to and look at that function type again, it has to match this. So I'm just going to copy this, this function type. I'm going to go back and paste it right here. And now this function type should match this function type. Now what do I want to do when this function gets called is basically I want to set that date label. And that's it. So that is one way to do it. And let me just make some notes here. Okay, now I'm going to show you a different way to do this. And that is using a closure. Okay, now in order to use the closure, it starts off the same. Pop up dot on save equals. And then I want to specify my function in line. And you do that with a open brace and close brace. So basically this function is going to kind of like start from here to here. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. So the first thing in order to set this uh, function up to be the same type, same function type, we notice we need this uh, data parameter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and throw it in there like that. And then Nothing is returned. So I could write it like this. And then I then you use the in keyword. The in keyword kind of like represents this first brace right here. And then any code after this would be any code that you would have here. So I'm going to copy that and put it in there like this. Okay, so now you see oh, in in order to use this, I actually need the self keyword because what I'm doing is I'm actually I'm taking this code. When this code runs, it's not actually going to run right here on line 23 in this class second view controller it's actually going to run 
on the where this property is called. So you're kind of like passing in this function and it's going to go here and it's actually going to get called right here. So this is where your code is actually getting called right here. You know where you pass in like a formatted time then it and then it receives the format time and calls the parameter data and it gets set to this label that's on the second view controller. So you're passing a reference to either your second view controller here so it can access the date label. Good, so that's the second way to do it is use a closure. Now there are some things that you can clean up here that is sort of like a shorthand for closures. Again, you know, when you write a function, if nothing is getting returned, well, you don't even need that part right there. Also, the type is optional too. It will infer the type from this method signature right here, the on save. So we can actually delete that as well. And if later you're looking at someone else's code and you want to know what type this is, you can always just click on on save. And if you come to the help pane, then you can see the type here and you can see it's a type string. Okay, let's run this and see if it works. And first what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out and then we're basically checking to make sure that this on save function works correctly. So let's run it. Okay, we'll go to the second view controller, select date. Okay, nothing happened. Uh, let's set a breakpoint, see if it's even coming in here. All right, good, it is coming in here. So let's step over. Ah, oh, skip it on. Oh, you know why? Because we didn't set this identifier for the second segue from the second view controller. All right, so let's copy that. Get rid of that breakpoint. Let's go back to our main storyboard. We'll go back to this segue here. And yeah, it's missing an, an identifier. I'm not sure if you can do this or not. I'm not sure if segues need unique identifiers because this one has the same identifier. But let's try it out. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, I guess it is allowed. Maybe if there's a second segue coming from the same view controller, maybe it has to have a unique identifier at that point. But since they're on different view controllers, that's my guess. I can t I'll can test it out later. Okay, so that works, but let's test the other way and make sure that works too, using a closure. Perfect. All right, good guys. So in summary, let's just review again what we did. We started out with the date pop-up view controller and we created this variable here. And this variable is a just a function type. It just specifies the input and the output parameters of a function. And if you're coming from other languages, you might also know this as a method signature or a function signature, but in Swift it's called a function type. So then later here, when we clicked on save date, we called the function and we passed in whatever value the person's looking for, whether it's formatted date or formatted time. Okay, now to assign that on save, what we did is we came here. You can either assign it to an existing function or you can create a function, or you can just do it with a closure. And I showed you how you can set up your parameters and your return type, which they're optional, so we deleted them because we weren't returning anything. And we're using the self keyword here because we're actually passing in a reference to the second view controller so we can access the date label. Because this code doesn't actually get run here, it actually gets run on the date pop-up view controller. We're just passing in a function. That's why I did it two ways. I want to show you that what we're actually doing is we're taking this function and we're assigning it to this property here, and then it will get run on the date pop-up view controller. All right, guys, so now you've learned two different ways. You learned the notification center, and you also learned the callback function to pass data back from your pop-up. Let me know what your thoughts are on using both those. Which one do you think it will be easier for you? Which one do you think is easier to set up? Which one do you think will be easier to maintain in the future? Personally, I kind of like using the callbacks because it seems a little bit easier to set up. But it's kind of like an advanced topic because this concept of passing around functions into different classes takes a little while to get used to. But once you have a clear concept that you can pass functions into different classes to get run, then it's a little bit easier to understand. By the way, this concept of passing in 
a function or a functionality into other classes, you've probably already used before. For example, let me just show you something here. Like if you've done animations or watched any of my other videos, you've seen this kind of code right here, uiview.animate. And, and right here, does this look familiar right here, this parameter? Well, this is a function type. It's a function that takes in no parameters and it returns nothing, it returns a void. And then you just pass in your code here. So really what you're doing is you're passing in your code into this animate function and the uiview.animate will be responsible for running your code. So that's another example of passing in functions into another class. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, because I know this can be kind of a tricky topic, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. And consider sharing this video if you would like other people to know about it. If you'd like to help me out, what you can do is you can add a translation to this video using the three little dots below the video below. Just click on the three little dots, you'll see an item for add translations. Just click on that and then you can add a translation to just the title and the description in your native language. And that will help other people in your country find this video. And consider subscribing because there's going to be another video that's going to be coming out showing you a third way to pass data back from this pop-up, this reusable pop-up that we have, to the view controller. All right, thanks guys.